Thank you for doing this, man. This is awesome. As long as they don't, yeah, I love doing this stuff. I'm really, I'm super hyped to chat with you. Love the good, good training chat. Awesome, so. awesome. Well, before we get yeah. into training, what's uh, what's the Instagram handle? How do I pronounce that? My, <laughs> it was like, it's. I guess you would call it Kegaji was how I wanted it to be pronounced, but you know, like every. But okay, so what actually happened when I first tried to make it i wanted it to be k e g g a g with a big g on the end like keg a g like a gangster or whatever i don't know so that was the thinking behind that and then instagram doesn't allow you to do the capital letters so i kind of got i was like that. keg keg gag keg, keg, keg. <laughs> i'm like there's gotta that's be a joke behind this that i just don't know from keegan so i asked lander and he's like i actually don't know what that means i'm like okay that's my first question because i need to like understand yeah. the- <laughs> Tag like, on tag ag, so like they don't that's you know they can damn it instagram it. yeah exactly screwed me on that a bit but that's awesome well. where are you right now you're in we're in the world i'm right now in uh i'm i'm in portugal for quite a bit i'm kind of we're doing a training camp we just did a race block and now we're doing a little training camp kind of gearing up to our our big event of the year, which is the the vault of Portugal in a few weeks. So sick. What's the big chunk of training going on there for you guys? Like, how are you preparing for that? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I think that's kind of something that I've been trying to ask the boss and the coach, but he's busy. He's actually commentating on the tour today. So he hasn't gotten back to me, but I'm assuming, you know, we, we've got, a one day race next week kind of in the middle of the training block and then as far as specific day to day i'm not quite sure hopefully we'll get some more info in the next days but yeah i can't i can't really okay really cool. offer much about that honestly okay so can i actually post this as part of the podcast because like i think it's important for other riders oh, to... yeah. yes or no sorry i can Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Okay, cool. Because I think it's like a lot of things that I've talked to other athletes who have come on and just, you know, I think as amateurs, we can pick out our like, it's March, and we might know what we're doing in September. And for you guys, it's totally not that case. And I think for athletes to hear, you're going into a training camp, and you kind of don't know what's going down yet. Like, that's normal. I think those are questions that I wanted to ask you, like, you have a very unique journey as everybody does. But I think some of the things you've been through will be really helpful for other athletes to maybe not avoid, but like things you, as you look back on your story, like how would you handle the situations? And um, and if there's anything I you don't want to talk about, just be like, yeah, no, and we'll cut that out. So no, uh, no, no, no. I, I really don't care about any like I'm very much an open book. So you ask me whatever you can. All right. I, that's fair well i think the first question that most people want to know is how what do you think about your training makes you climb so damn fast you know that's an interesting question i really think it has nothing to do with training actually okay and this this might be a bit this is only my opinion maybe you have some 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 comments but as far as climbing the the three like principal specialties that i see them in cycling be climbing like a sprinter like someone that can just bang out these insane 20 second power and then okay so we'll just use those two those are very much just genetic like obviously you can can train and improve anything that you want but i don't know like i just there there are guys for instance that have great power to weight ratios on paper but at the end of the race, for whatever reason, at the end of the stage, they're they can't produce the power under torque, or when it's a steep grade, or for X reason, Y reason. There's just a thousand things that, like, maybe this guy in particular, I'm thinking of a random guy. Obviously, I won't say his name, but power to weight rise, he crushes me. Like in a 20 minute power to weight, he blow my doors up, but he would never get close to my mountaintop finish you know mm-hmm. and so that's why i say it's it's very much a genetic thing that said there's obviously a ton of training to try and improve obviously but training specifics that i do that help my climbing 
um a lot of just climbing just a lot of climbing it's just, just as easy as that yeah getting well, your body what... used to that different fork so you bring up okay yeah so you brought up torque which i think is really great i think one other thing though you know when you took I think super flag, it was like in the middle of a long ride. So it wasn't like, all right, I'm fresh. I'm going to go crank out this effort and like hopefully get this KOM. And the stories that people, we won't, that they can read about you getting some of these KOMs on the bike that you did it on are absolutely hilarious. Um, yeah. What do you think there's something to your fatigue resistance that are you doing a lot of efforts later in your training rides? Or is it just from the bulk of racing that you've done that you're getting those efforts later in a training ride? Do you think that has anything to do with it? Or do you think, again, it's just genetics and you happen to have like, you just don't get as tired as other guys by the end of the race? It's a tricky one. It's, it's just a combo of both. You know, I really obviously doing these hard races is going to help you with that endurance. And that is a major, major factor mm -hmm. because my God, I mean, every time I do a race, it like almost, not almost, it does surprise me. Like, wow, how hard you can go at the end of a race, you know, when in training, I would like, if I had those same sensations before the, you know, I did this mountaintop finish the other day and you're hitting the base of this climb thinking like, well, if I were in training right now, it would like turn around and go right to the house, you know, but then you end up somehow like pulling out some of your highest numbers and that's just the adrenaline and all that. So that definitely pushes your, your fatigue resistance to a new level. But as far as training, I actually tend to do very few efforts. And if I do do high quality efforts, I'm talking the VO2 is that type of stuff. I more like to do them on, on a shorter ride. I don't, mm. I tend to kind of like do my long rides just longer. You know, the tempo is great, but I, I don't like that sensation really in training of like going out, switching your legs, being pretty destroyed and then still having to bike for four hours afterwards, you know? Like it just takes away a bit of my Whereas in the race, that's kind of just for the course. So I, if I have a hard, hard VO2 session or something, I do it as quick as I can in like a shorter session normally. Okay. So I yeah, think amateurs would like to hear that because that's more, yeah. more uh, feasible for people to actually go do, go have the hard sessions, get your long rides in. It doesn't all have to be like a brain bashing every single ride. And uh, totally. uh, yeah. So this uh you know one of the first questions i was thinking of like big picture which and maybe it's not possible because things like these camps come up and you don't necessarily know what you have to do or what races you're going to but how do you look at the big picture of putting or maybe you don't putting the year together like you're coming into spring you're like all right these are my goal races like so maybe x months before i want to do a base period or i want to like get this type of training before this race because of X, Y, and Z, or like, how do you formulate that in your head? Now, do you do this alone? Do you do it with a friend, a coach? What's your sort of method there of like zooming out? Yeah, it's, it's as, as a pro rider, it's, you really have to kind of get used to just surrendering control a bit. You know, we're all going to do our obvious november december january you're kind of focusing on the base blah 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 the typical stuff but once you get into the race season like i say you kind of have to be willing to surrender control maybe your team buzzes you up the night before and you have to do a five or a seven day stage race the next day and that just totally screws up all this planning that you've had and i love 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 planning I, that's by far the reason why I do with cycling is I love kind of experimenting and trying different training methods out of my own body. But I've had it happen to me so many times where I'm like, oh, yeah, like I'm going to do this race and then I'm going to come and I'm going to do this little recovery period and then I'm going to do this training block. And then the team buzzes you up. Yep, we need you to come to this race. And I'm like, oh, God. you know, <laughs> and then you can either be really defeated by that which i've definitely been in the past or just kind of try and accept it as part of the job but if i were more on the amateur side yeah i i definitely you know it's it, i i wouldn't say i'd have any any 
approach different than kind of the typical. And for me, the important thing is just getting that base solid. I'm a rider that, that just makes my body work well, making sure that I have those hours of the zone two, that the, the base super solidified. And it, as far as I have, as long as I have that, I'm going to be more or less at my level, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is a great, yeah. you led into a great topic that so many people ask about a zone two ride. What is that for you? Are you doing that by power, by heart rate? Then it's like yeah. high zone two, low zone two. What, what is a zone two for key? Zone two for me, I, <laughs> I ride. Very, I love that you're laughing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely have trained myself over the years to ride very robotically, but like, it doesn't cost me mentally. I just like, I've done so many years of just like riding where I can, like, if you look at some of my, my Strava files, like I'm capable of just riding at my zone to literally absolutely dead, even for five hours with three, four minutes of coasting time in the whole ride, like stuff that a lot of people would kind of think is a little bit crazy. And like laundry can attest to this, I'm sure <laughs> because he looks at my Strava, I know, but, um, yeah, so so my zone two, I've gone through phases in my career where I've thought like, oh, you got to be at the top of your zone two. But the reality is there really isn't much of a difference physiologically that you get between being at your low zone two versus at your really high zone two where you're kind of like medium suffering, except there's an extreme, extreme additional fatigue to that. So as I've gotten older and less stupid i've actually gone way lower with my zone too you know like there's just there's no knee i literally i used to go out and literally average on my zone two rides back when i was younger thinking like, oh yeah, this is gonna pay off you know 280 290 i'd average for my zone two rides and it makes you fit and then by the time i got to january i was just so 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 dead thank god i got an injury that spring so it forced me off the bike for a good six weeks but like i was just destroyed from doing that and you know i could have got way less fatigue by riding those hours at 220 210 you know and still built that aerobic engine just as well without the additional fatigue so that's kind of my my new approach i would say I like that. Somebody told me that you might have been so serious about not coasting that you might have been breaking on downhill so you could pedal. Oh yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amazing, yeah, yeah. dude. Oh yeah. You look like this is like I'm not embarrassed of it, but like you look at some of my my old training peak Strava files, like I don't know if you know like a climb like Flagstaff or Magnolia and Boulder, like wildly steep downhills, like you know, twelve percent average. And I'm at, holding my brakes going down these climbs averaging like 270. Dude. It's just ridiculous, stupid. But yeah, no, I mean. <laughs> live and learn. It's all about growing yeah. as a person. So learn, I live and learn. are you doing, are you using power exclusively in your training or where does heart rate come into play? And maybe even RP on zone two rides endurance rides high intensity stuff how does that play out yeah for me i'm mostly gauging off power i definitely i i have the heart rate monitor strapped on and i mostly kind of use it just just the main thing i use the heart rate for is to see how much i'm i'm getting that heart rate drift at the end of a zone two ride but i mean there's so obviously you know there's so many factors that mm -hmm. contribute to the to the heart rate. I mean, the heat for like I'm, my heart rate seems to really, really jack up in the heat. I'll start the ride at two thirty, my heart rate will be one twenty, and at five hours later, if it's ninety five degrees, it'll be one fifty. I mean, like at least, at least. So like huge, huge, and that happens to everyone, obviously. But and then the main thing I use the heart rate for is kind of I've noticed a trend with my own body that if I'm kind of, if I know I'm kind of risking it a bit kind of on the fatigue side, meaning like I haven't maybe rested quite enough, but maybe I'll still be feeling quite good in this time. And, but in the back of my mind, I'm kind of like, Ooh, I, I'm, I'm risking it right now. If my heart rate is really low in that time, 
I know that in two or three days I'm falling off the cliff and I'm going to be smoked, you know? So if I see that I'm going out on my zone two rides and my heart rate's 110 and 115, I'm like, ooh, okay, it's probably better. Even if I feel strangely good in this moment, it's probably better to shut it down for a bit and get that rest out of the way. Cool. What do you do for those types of periods? So let's say it's like, okay, I want a rest week or whatever you call it in your head. What do you do for that? For those next, how many days would you say, or do you do that by feel? Yeah, I, I'm usually, I try and force myself to just do nothing. No biking. If I had any like regular days, any amount of days, I mean, like three days. Two um, days? You know, I, 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 yeah, it just kind of depends on how smashed you're feeling. But for me, it's always, when I'm motivated, I need to fight my instinct to train. And like, basically, if I do the opposite of what my brain is telling me, which is let's train right now, like, you know, you're going to come out of this fatigue hole a bit, like, let's go back training, got to do the opposite. So if I take two days off, my brain's telling me, we're ready to go and then probably take another day, I, you know, three, three days, I, I took three days off actually just maybe two weeks ago my bike kind of I, I was kind of feeling a bit crappy on the bike during this time I will say and then thankfully my bike broke and I was doing an altitude camp in a town that I didn't really have access to a bike shop blah 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 and then I went to the bike shop they couldn't fix it for a few days so I had to just sit on the couch and sure enough after that I felt a million times better so just not that's a story you'll hear quite often like people that are forced to rest and then oh man i'm flying like so good. yeah and so when yeah. so it sounds like with uh i usually like to ask kind of like about the balance of volume and intensity you sort of hit on having your big base is important and since you race a lot maybe you feel you get the intensity from those races but maybe can you put yourself back before you were racing as much like how do you feel intensity plays in with the big base of endurance that is important for your success? Yeah, back. Yeah, exactly right. When you're racing a lot, definitely careful with the intensity and training, I would say. Depends. I mean, like everyone's so, so, so different. That's the crazy thing about all these topics. But in my, in my case, they're, but before I was racing a ton, yeah, I did. I did a quite a fair bit of intensity, but like, like, you know, two max just, intervals, I, threshold intervals, like the thing right, right, up. stuff like that. But when I think back in those times, I also spent November, December, January, just absolute full focused zone two, nothing else. My my training plans those year was so simple. I would literally zone two every hour, five second sprint. That was my training six days a week, one day off the bike and just hours 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 so i mean that's probably not the most efficient way to train nowadays but it did serve me to really build that base for three months which is by the end you're totally bored as hell of doing that but after that i had the base to really really sustain you know spring and summer of just kind of doing a decent bit of intensity every week and not 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 so much volume mm. so yeah do you do any big gear work or high torque work or locating stuff you reference that in the climbing yeah i i do but surely you know like the science behind that is very touchy but i think that type of training can really be useful for certain people for for, for instance in my case I feel like it really helps me isolate my glutes mm. and it's not that it doesn't Dude. so to speak strengthen them because we just can't strengthen the muscle on the bike. It's just flat out impossible without, without the ground reaction, but it allows me to like mentally know when I'm using my glute and that theoretically helps me kind of, learn to pedal better because you know there's some people have the lazy glutes and whatnot and i think i'm kind of one of those people so if i really spend that five minutes where i'm doing that interval thinking like pedal with my butt pedal with my butt pedal with my butt just kind of becomes more and more just a habit over time 
It is so interesting that you bring but because it's very dangerous for the injuries. I've been injured doing that, and I know other people have too. So it's very and tricky. You, was it your knee, or what? What did you injure? Yeah, I've had knee from doing that, and then I've had an Achilles tendonitis that I rare like smashed doing the stupid low cadence. How long were you doing the low cadence for? <laughs> I don't remember in that time. I when I when I hurt my Achilles, ten minutes, twenty minutes. I know, like Kwiatkowski does, like some crazy oh. long stuff. Oh yeah, no, I I definitely am a big advocate in not doing super long. I mean, like you can do, like I know, like Sepp Kuss really does a ton of these where he does a long, long climb and he'll do four minutes low, two minutes regular cadence, four minutes low cadence all the way up a climb that's 50 minutes or whatever, but always giving yourself that short period of deloading, you know? And it's like, I have a friend that I saw her training the other week and her coach was having her do like 20 minute blocks at 50 RPM. And I, that for me, that provokes a bit of an injury risk. Like, I, I don't know why I think it again, I have no science backing that statement, but yeah, as long as there's a bit of a deloading phase, I, I'd assume that it's more or less risky, you know? Yeah, no, it's interesting. And I think you make a really interesting point of like the science behind it. I, I in some of the podcasts that we do, when I just do like, Hey, things I'm thinking of, I, I want to not come across as the non-science guy, but I think now in cycling, there's so much of, well, show me the study. It's like, Someone, yeah. like, oh, this stuff really works. I'm like, oh, well, show me the study of what physiologically are you changing. I think that's really important, but I also think there's like, there's things that just work and we don't know yet. And there's, we don't know everything about cycling and endurance performance. And so I, there was a podcast that actually Andy Coggin was on and he went down this point. And he's like, listen, the lab is not the biggest and most gold standard like performance is. And I thought it was just very interesting for, a science person like himself to say that so to hear a pro like you talk about this it's yeah. really good for people that you got to find what works for you and you you mentioned like there's so everyone responds differently to this stuff yeah. um you got to try out different things and that was you brought up different training methods a little bit ago that you had tried what are some of the things that have sort of popped up that you dabbled with that are maybe maybe not outside the ordinary but when you would reference that what were you kind of referring to yeah, when I, when I say that, more so I'm meaning, like, the, the year that I coached myself, I, like, it was a blast. It was the 2020 year, you know? So, like, we didn't have the racing. I knew I needed to kind of train a lot because I, like, I still want to, you know, keep building the engine and whatnot. And so that summer, I just, just kind of, put my body without the fear of like, Ooh, there's a race in two weeks. Like I need to kind of not be an idiot right now. And so that I don't show up to that race in a body bag. So yeah, that summer, I really just experimented with a bit more of the extremes, you know, like a bit higher volume. And then once I had that base built up through June, July, August, I just did like, nothing really specific but tried as much as i can and i i listened to the podcast with paul that you did the other day paul double and he he mentioned a few times like it's very very impossible almost to replicate in training what races is and i mean for me like i'm totally in agreement with that but what i try to do during this time was just you know analyze these race files and, and try and replicate them you know always the little accelerations out of every corner the little just trying to have you know in a four-hour ride 10 minutes above x power similar as you would in a race and then just kind of stuff like that no no crazy like yeah i was doing 33 27 intervals nothing like that just just trying to really replicate the demands of a race and I don't know. I had a blast doing it. Honestly, it was, it was a How blast. Did that go? I got really fast. You come, you got, oh wait, say that last part again. I got really fast. I got really fast doing that. So it was, that was another great thing. So how did that go when you came back and you looked at the numbers, were you able to get close to those times in those really hard zones compared to the race numbers that you saw? Yeah, I definitely think so. The, the thing in the race 
that's so different for me is, is just the adrenaline, like the adrenaline of, and it's just happened to me so many times in a race. Like I can't even tell you, like, you know, it, it, for me, I suffer most in the races when I'm, when the race isn't on, it's like, you're just riding along and you have, you can think and analyze, Oh God, I'm really not feeling that well. Oh, I'm going to get dropped. Like I've even had times where like, maybe the team would be like kind of riding for me and I go and I, the first part of the race will be really hard and I'll go back to the team. Be like, oh, I'm screwed. To, like, I don't count on me. And then somehow or another, like the adrenaline starts going, you're fighting people and yelling. And like, all of a sudden you're, like I said, the other day, banging out your highest 20 minute power. And you're like, wait a second, like felt horrible today, you know, but you didn't like, if you're fit and you know, you're fit, you have the fitness you just got to turn your brain off a little bit is is kind of but yeah that's the biggest difference in the races for me and then that training block i definitely was able to, to replicate more or less the demand i think more or less more or less what do you think you made a comment in a blog somewhere where it was like you know, i'm a gc guy i get better as the stages go on is that a mindset that you have that you're just talking about like okay, this is day four. I'm definitely a little banged up. Just don't listen to my brain and just go race. Or like, how do you, what do you, how do you approach that? Like you're going and you're like, man, I feel, maybe don't feel a little tired. I don't know. How does that play out for you? Yeah. For me, it's weird. I, and like, I've always been that way in my career since the first year that I did it. I've just like, I never can get my legs to feel good the first day what i do the day before even if i go out and do a billion openers and all this stuff or even the second day i'm never good third day maybe i'm okay fourth day i'll be finally like okay my body's in the rhythm and then like i'm in the rhythm and then i'm flying for the rest of it but i know there are a lot of riders that are very different or opposite to that like they come into the race and like every day they're just going to block down with their form whereas i'm opposite i don't know really what that's from probably just a genetic thing honestly what do you do the three days before let's say a five to seven day stage race what i like to do is kind of okay like i don't respond well to rest like if i go in fresh to a stage race i'm gonna be shelled like none other absolutely shelled or a one day race like you know the typical thing that is before a one day race, you go out and you do like your one hour, like mm -hmm. zone one ride with your team. If I do that, I am in the Gruppetto or just flat out out of the race. Like I can't, my legs will not work at all. Um, so yeah, what I like to do kind of is if I'm really targeting a, a big stage race, the week, two weeks before, I'll have like my easy week, like my taper and then I'll use the week leading into the race to like train well, build up again and like go into that race with the body opened up everything. I mean, it has, <laughs> I haven't done it that many times where it's actually worked, but like the few times that I've done a good opening few days of a stage race, that's what I've been able to do. So there's a, I don't know if you ever heard of this paper road to gold. It's actually looking at Nordic skiers, but they talk about this. They're like, there's all these theoretical tapers that people do. So let's look at, it's only like 11 athletes, but you had to be a world champion or won like a world club. It was like legit athletes. And it's crazy to see what these people, yeah. like some people increase their training rate before the race is like, I think it was nobody did the typical like have your volume but keep intensity the same and so it just yeah. highlighted like the personalized nature and i think there's also yeah. some mental that goes into that and just i hope in 20 years when we have more sensors and weird stuff on our body we're going to be able to like tap into yeah. all those things and be like oh it's because your body's doing xyz and the mitochondria are blah 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 blah, blah. just yeah. weird stuff totally. Totally. um yeah. so yeah you made a comment about we can't get stronger on the bike do you get in the gym at all or are you just riding and cross training? I've never done the gym until this last winter. Mm. And I really decided that I was going to try and commit to it this last winter. And it was a really bizarre experience. I definitely put on muscle, put on, and I, this is the thing that is, 
for the weightlifting, it's clear. The science 100% backs it. If you do it well, it's going to help you. But if you do it wrong, you are going to, you're going to be worse by far. And like, I feel like it's a thing that's so complicated that if you don't have someone that's, or like, what are those things called? They're like, they measure velocity or whatever. Um, I can't remember. I don't know the name, but I know what you're referring yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of the world tour guys that have these weight programs, they have those. I see them in the gym and they're using these things that are super expensive because like how many times this winter when I was doing it, like the classic, just do the weight session. And I, it was weird. I I do my weight session in the morning. And then I'd go out in the afternoon and I'd, I'd go out in the afternoon biking and my legs would feel tired, but they'd feel so powerful and like opened up. And I was like pedaling so roundedly and it felt really bizarre. But then often like the two days after that, I would just be body bag, body bag, you know, like how many times riding to my coach this last winter, like, Oh, I'm so smashed. Like, I can't even ride. Like I got, I'm done with this gym shit. Like I can't do this anymore. And, but at the same time, I felt like it was helping me in a certain way. But in the end, I kind of continued start trying to do it through the spring. Same similar. And I had a bizarre, bizarre spring with just like, I felt like I was like pretty good at times, but every time I'd go to race, I would just, I'd be horrible, Mm. horrible, horrible, horrible. And I had to switch coaches in the end of April. And my coach was like, all right, drop this weight shit now. You know, like, it's great that you do it in the winter, but in the race season, absolutely no way. And I stopped it and like those weird sensations went right away. And so I clearly <laughs> wasn't doing it correctly. And that's what I mean saying like, it's something you have to do. Like if anyone goes out biking, they're going to get better. But if you go to the gym and you do it improperly, you could just totally ruin yourself and become way worse at biking. You know, it's kind of one of those things. I think that fatigue too is hard to quantify. And since we don't have like a power meter in the weight room and like, we can't, it's like, it exactly you do Yeah. And everybody's going to be different to that. So that's good. Yeah. A good highlight. It's, I love lifting and some of them still fiddling with myself of trying to figure out what the right balance is. And especially when yeah. to like super hard races, there's just something about, and similar when you say like maybe riding too much high zone two or too much tempo, there's that weird lingering fatigue that yep. it's hard to, as the athlete, or at least for me, it's hard to like see it until I step back and take that rest. I'm like, oh damn, I was really tired. Like, oops. Totally. <laughs> Did that exactly. <laughs> and like I, I don't know where I was reading this, some study, but like these micro damages that you do from like a hard session of lifting, they can stay with you for weeks. Really? Like, like I, I don't remember exactly, but like maybe like two weeks it was saying like these micro tears in your muscles. Like even if you feel on the bike, like, yeah, I'm good. You might still be dealing with some of that, like micro fatigue, muscle damage that you had from your gym session, 10, 12 days ago. Wow. And I definitely felt like that was something that very negatively affected me this spring. It's, it's tricky. It's a tricky one. Cause you always hear like, yeah, you got to lift weights and you got to lift weights year round or else you're just, which is obvious. Like if you just give it up in the middle of the mm-hmm. of February, it just serves for nothing. But to do that while you're racing, traveling, and as a pro, when you're doing these long stage races, you do a seven day stage race, you don't lift for the next, you don't lift for the five days before. You don't lift for three days after. There you have two weeks without lifting and then you're basically out of shape out of gym shape and then you're just oh god it's just a kind of cycle that is not not going well yeah what what's something you've learned about cycling or training and racing that's made you better at training and racing you've kind of given us some already but anything in your head with that one Uh, you know with that one all right ask me it again 
Line does what, what have you learned over the years about like cycling that's made you better at it? Okay. Okay. This is what I've learned about cycling and training in Pacific is that it's not as complicated as we think. Everyone loves to think that there's some magical training interval, blah, 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 that's going to make them super insane at biking. The reality is it's the boring stuff that you do every day mm. and you do it with consistency. That's what's going to give you those gains. Like it's, it's unfortunate because it'd be great if there was just that banger session of intervals that, that just gave you that 10%, but it's just not the case. So when I kind of got that idea out of my mind of like, Oh yeah, I have to always be doing these fancy intervals and these, like I've seen guys do crazy intervals, you know, like seven seconds sprint, 13 seconds rest, seven seconds sprint. And I'm like, this is just, really complicated and like mentally wearing too maybe it helps but my my last coach was really good at this and, and just kind of getting me into that mindset of just just bike just do your biking as long as you're biking every day the specific crazy stuff less important for you in my case someone has had a lot of injuries and health issues and blah 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 and a lot of inconsistencies over the years What's going to help me is just, just being consistent and biking, period. Mm -hmm. You're going to get better doing that. And so that's kind of my, my, my answer. I like that. No, it's good. It helps simplify things because it is. There's, mm -hmm. right now, I mean, there's just so much information out there. There's people like me putting out information. It's like, how do I know? Do I listen to this guy or this guy or this or this? And I think I always try to promote, oh. like, have a training buddy, have somebody that you can talk to consistently so they know what you've been doing and can just help you like focus a little bit and get your plan together mm -hmm. and, and go with it and just don't yeah. do what everybody else is doing. It's too confusing at times. Totally agree. Totally agree. What's something that you're trying to improve on for this season? basically that like again weird weird stuff this spring last year i had a bunch of weird health issues kind of stuff this spring i just just want to be consistent like i know i'm not a pojakar or a vingegaard but i know i'm decently talented and if i can just 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 be a bike rider you know like every week ride my bike if i don't have a time where i have to spend 10 days off because like for instance this spring i had bizarre infection this blah 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 in the hospital this 10 days off then the next time seven days off for this thing and those are the little inconsistencies that end up making you way way worse mm -hmm. and so my and it's not even really something that is in my control but just just to try and finish the season out Hopefully I can do it with no catastrophes and that's just going to make you better straight up. As easy so as that. You know, people that know your story, you had that weird infection, you broke your collarbone. Like it was like a rough, you're like getting hit. And how do you bounce back from that stuff? What's your, you wake up and you're like, dude, what is going on? How you keep moving forward? Cause this sport is so hard and I have, you know, trying to do this as a professional athlete. I mean, what's, What's the motivation there? What's the mindset? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I won't lie. There were many times where I was like, I am done with this sport. Like, literally, I had this a point this spring where I, I totally committed that I was going to quit. Like, I was in this race kind of being like, what is the matter with my body? It's just not responding at all. What is, like, I think my body's just telling me something right here. Like, I'm... <laughs> my time as an athlete's kind of done. Let's just hang it up. I'd even written out like my email to my boss being like, I'm sorry, like I just, I can't do this anymore. How did I come out of that? I don't really know. Like I just love so much. It's, it's so hard. Like now where I'm speaking to you right now, like I'm back in the like mental game. Like I, I want to improve. I want to, do the races but man there were times of spring where i just couldn't have cared less like i just wanted to get out 
I don't know how I really survived, <laughs> to be honest. Like, <laughs> I love the whole training science experimentation on my body, kind of that process so much that if I can just somehow come back to being in that process, it just brings me back in every time, you know, even when I'm just literally like so over it. I, I, it's it's i'm not i'm not explaining it well <laughs> no this is good man it's really good to hear you talk through this like it, there was something that like maybe the fire went out a little bit it seems like or like oh, something major. ignited it and and it goes in waves like i you know i don't want to tell my stories this is about yours but it relates in that an athlete no, no. was talking to me about how he was just kind of like having this blah feeling and just was had a crappy year. It was really rough. And I was like, dude, I've quit cycling like seven times. And he's like, wait, what? Oh, really? I see you on Strava and you're always like super hyped and stuff. I'm like, well, yeah, but I, I don't usually post one. I'm like feeling like poop. Like it's just that yeah. sad. I don't need to like be like, feel bad for me, everybody. I'm having a bad week, you know? And he, he was so shocked to hear that. I'm like, dude, I need to ask more of the professional athletes about things like this because it's not always just like, I'm crushing. It, like there's oh, yeah. vibes to it. And so I think for oh. people to hear that, especially the person who's working nine to five and then they're getting out of work and trying to ride. And I just feel so badly when people get in a slump and they feel like it's only them that's having this. They quit cycling or something. And it's just like, no man, like this is just part of it. Like you gotta take a step back. Like, it's okay to lose the fire for a little bit. Like it'll come back. Just, you know, totally. try and find it. And honestly, it's even hard for me to verbalize it, but it's, yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's very tricky. Yeah. 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 No, that's, I mean, everyone, everyone's got to go through those. And it's just, I think human nature to kind of feel like, Oh, I'm the only one that's yeah. everyone else is just having just perfect training and no sicknesses or anything like <laughs> But it's really not the case. And you yeah. Remember, did anybody say anything to you or like any advice during that period that maybe stuck with you or things you might have read or things that were like, oh, uh, I'm taking that with me through this hard time? Not really. I'm I'm definitely someone I have a lot of not issues, but I, I very much am like influenced by myself. Like of course I have people that I look up to or if they gave me advice, I'd listen to it. But in those times, I definitely felt like I needed to get my own head straight and nobody else could really tell me like, everyone's going to tell me, Oh, but you like, you have an engine, like don't waste it. The classic, like, yo, you'll get better stuff like that. But in the moment, you're just like, I don't, I don't care at all. Like, I want to be, I'm done, <laughs> you know. But damn, now it's it's bizarre thinking back on on my career, like how many times I've just been so close to being like, adios. But now in this moment, I'm like super hyped on cycling. It's just the ups and downs. Like you said, like the illusion will come back if you just got to stick to it cool. for whatever reason. I don't know why it comes back, but yeah bizarre i love that i appreciate your candor man it's uh definitely oh, yeah, of course hearing this what's let's talk about nutrition what's your on the bike preference are you a liquid carb guy are you like a food guy are you a gel guy what's what are you doing when you're riding maybe if you could break it down into the two extremes long endurance ride and racing racing just everything the racing i definitely just probably overeat in the race like i mean you hear all the talk about the 100 grams 120 grams an hour stuff like that like and how so difficult to do that but i swear i've never really counted but i feel like i could do that easy like just yeah. whenever i have like any minute where i'm like oh i'm suffering oh eat 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 you know mm -hmm. in train so yeah everything the gels the the bars, the everything in the races that they give me. In training, I usually I get these little granola bars that they have at the store in, in Spain and, and I eat a lot of like Haribo gummies. Okay. <laughs> a lot of Haribo gummies. A lot of just yeah, nothing crazy. Nothing what's nothing the top crazy. Haribo brand that you're picking up? Haribo, Haribo. Or, sorry, like what's the what's the are you going twin snakes? Are you going some weird 
Portuguese one that I don't know about. Are you going? They've got one over here. I don't know what it's called. They're like these red and white ones. Oh, they're phenomenal. Like they're white phenomenal. That's like that. It's not jelly. It's that weird like. Yeah. 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 I love those. There's a dinosaur version of that. They are banging. I was in uh, France and I was like, yep. oh, yeah, crushed they're those. Totally so good. They have some really good Haribo flavors over here, I will say. <laughs> What's Are you big into cycling tech at all? Nah, absolutely not. Nothing. Ride, whatever. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm totally out of that world, honestly. What's, what do you think is underrated in cycling? And I actually think you might have given this answer already, but I'm going to ask you anyways. Underrated in cycling? Hmm, let's see if I can think of something different. Underrated? Yeah, I, I, I'd probably just go with my consistency thing, you know, like just, okay. just, just okay. trying to get out of this mentality of like, I, I mean, I've just seen so many coaches that mostly for coaches that are coaching amateur riders that are trying to lower their VLA max because of this we're going to spend two weeks lowering your VLA max and then we're going to we're going to do a block of blah 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 some crazy term that I have no idea what it means as someone that loves this theme and like is a pro writer and loves researching about this I've never heard of this word and then we're going to spend a time of doing this type and it's like holy lord like <laughs> you just need to bike like if you bike uh, six days a week you're going to get better period you know like so i'll give you a I'm good example of the flip side i had a guy one time he he was leaving and he was like well i just want to tell you the number one reason i'm leaving is you were totally mailing it in on the weekends i'm like what do you mean by that and he's like you were giving me endurance rides on the weekend i'm paying you for workouts dude and i was like yeah hey shoot and so i thought I, I was like i failed this guy i did not explain the point of endurance riding like that is a workout mm -hmm. and one that a lot of yeah. people do horribly and so mm -hmm. i think to the flip side of that it's like you know i think trying to take a step back and i just think of myself when i was like in basketball shorts like all right i'm gonna do this biking thing i guess like what do i go do and there are people yeah. that just, very basic like just like you're saying go ride Go find yep. a fast group ride and like talk to people there and see what they're doing. And then like totally. turn the camera all the time. And this is why totally. so, yeah, it's funny. It's a, it's a good point. What's it's, it's easy to get, get lost in that and in, in the weeds and that. And I understand why, like everyone, like it's kind of that, like everyone loves that magical, that idea that there's the magical training interval, but it's just not, unfortunately. And, and everybody wants it in 18 months. Right, exactly. And that's they the hit, like right. a little plateau and they're like, something's wrong with my training. I'm like, no, this happens to everybody. No, I'm I want more FTP. I'm like it's funny that you yep. say it that way, but okay, we'd all have nine hundred watt FTPs if it just kept going up, up, up. Like it's so totally. yeah, it's, totally. it's, it's a conversation, it's a learning process. It is, it is for sure. It is. What's yeah. overrated? What's too hyped? Many things. Many things. <laughs> Tell well, me all like I mean, oh God, I had a few of these that I thought of, but now I'm forgetting them. That's an overrated thing. We can come back to it if you think of it. People nowadays are getting way too caught up with the whole aerodynamics on the road bike stuff. And I really shouldn't be able to comment on this because I have no science backing at all with this like but like I, for instance the, the classic one like choosing to ride for my team last year we had an aero bike that we could ride and uh and a a climbing bike mm -hmm. and every i would ride the climbing bike but all my teammates would tell me like oh my god dude, what are you doing like that bike is so slow. Like you're just, you're getting killed on the flats because of that bike. And I'm thinking like, wait a second, what percentage of my drag is the front of this bike compared to my huge torso that's <laughs> abnormally long and that like sticks way up in the wind? 
it's very, very small, you know, like, so I don't know how I'm explaining myself. Well, like it, it's, it's, it's people will know what I'm saying. I, I feel, and this was one of your questions, like Watts over aerodynamics, Watts, freaking Watts. Oh my <laughs> Lord. Like the Watts are going to give you so much more speed and, and, it's all and, and watts over weight too, like trying to get super skinny, way less important than having just your highest watts, your being as strong in your leg as you possibly can versus being a kilo less. Oh, million times better. Million times better. I think also that has to probably do the strength, obviously having stronger legs and the strength of what you're talking about of later in a race. I think now that everybody has access to watts per kg of every athlete they're going up against, they look at these one-off efforts of like, I'm screwed. Joey just did blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, that's, that's like his freshest effort. Who He might yeah. suck after 90 minutes and your race is like half hours. Stop looking at that. Like, just the over Strava. I love Strava. But like, just so yeah. get, they have lost before they've even gone to the start line because absolutely else is faster. And it's like, dude, there's also yeah. simple tactics. Like, th this guy might be totally. And I mean, back. like, He's yeah, tactics and and commenting on your Strava, like, power meters definitely read differently. Like, there are definitely power meter brands that I swear they can be thirty watts or more. Like their guys that I know I'm within a kilo of their weight mm -hmm. that their power meter will read literally like 30 Watts lower than me. So mm -hmm. if you're looking at Strava, which I spend hours on Strava every day, like I'm obsessed, you know, yes. you look at Strava like, Oh, this guy did 420 at this crime. I'm going to blow his doors off. But then he blows my doors off in the race. I'm like, wait a second. Okay. So his power meter is way different, you know? Like, yeah. So that's just, yeah, many, many it's, comments. Yeah. No, that's, that's good for your people here because I don't think people always believe that. And it's like, so yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah. What's, what do you, which race, you got a big race in Portugal coming up. What race are you looking most forward to this year that you know about that's going to be happening? Uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of it for sure. That's, yeah. that's our Tour de France and the team that I'm currently in right now. That's the be all end all the Volta cool. Portugal. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You had made a comment one time about like your biggest obstacle was riding in the Peloton. And <laughs> is that still something you work on or how does that, how do you work on that? Or how did you work on that? Cause I think it's a, a huge topic that when people start racing too, they're like, Whoa, this is, way different than Zwift or way different than my like local group ride. I need to yeah. that. I'm still not good at it, but <laughs> I'm horrendous actually. But what do you, when, the, when you say that, why are you bad at it? What's so, what do you, I, I'm, I'm too kind to mm -hmm. other human beings mm -hmm. over here. And in any race, like it's very aggressive. I'm my personality lends itself to being, I don't want to fight. Like if someone wants the wheel and they're getting close to me, I give it to them mm -hmm. unless the race is really on. And then, and I know that it's like a fight moment and then somehow I can do it. I can get up there, mm -hmm. but there are guys that are so used to that and so good at it that they just do that throughout the whole five hours. And it's like second nature to them. Whereas to me, that really is, is something that costs me. Uh, I, I have the skills like I'm it's not that I'm not an athletic person or like I, I can't steer my bike or whatever it's just that I can't like I don't want to have someone yelling at me or like almost cause a crash when there's three and a half hours left in the race and like that stuff happens all the time in these races you know oh, screaming at people and like I just don't want that so I I will give someone the wheel no stress go to the back and then when i really need the fight you get up there and you're bumping bars and stuff but it's kind of a skill that i've just never i'm not good at that i don't know how people are good at that it's like it's 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 bizarre and you can speak to this like when you watch the tour de france it just looks so calm in there in the Peloton and like, but it's so not like that at all. 
and there are certain guys that can just stay at the front but it's such a skill and i don't know like what to do to improve that or what they're doing or you know it's it's just weird this is the first year i actually commented to somebody when watching the tour in like the first three stages i don't know if it's a the improvement in camera work and actually detail of scenes i'm like dude these guys are riding so aggressively like you could more see what you're talking about like just the fight the battling to get position and, and yeah as that's something i've always if i was able to do like uh you know a p1 race where it's conti pros in like the u.s let's say and there would maybe be two or three those guys always came in, rode well together as a team, flexed on all the cat ones, and it was like you're trying to stay up front. And I just always struggle with that. And it was the speed was also faster than you know your local P12 race. And is just then even crits, like big crits where the field is, you know, 60, 70 guys. That's half of a pro race. And like yeah. I can't even put my mind in that of doing that day after day after day. I think like yeah. Well, to Ecuador was the longest race I did, and I only made it five stages. And by the fifth day, I was like tired. You know, it's like then there's the fatigue exactly. aspect, and it's like, how do you fight when you're like? It's just the totally. me on the street that's watching Tour de France has no clue how insane that race is, um, or any. Yeah, oh, can't even imagine. Honestly, can't imagine. Crazy. <laughs> insane. Yeah. Maybe. What's uh the my last question for you? I appreciate you doing this. What's a piece of advice for the newer cyclists watching this? And it's like, man, Keegan is doing something I want to do. How do they get on that path? What's what's a lot? You've given a ton of advice, but what's maybe one last tip for them? You know, that's a tricky one. I would say the thing about cycling nowadays is and in particular getting on teams if you're not a set coos or a brandon mcnulty or a freak talent that is going to get drafted by a thousand teams it's all about connections and and trying to just put yourself into that world be it in the group rides be it in the races like trying to make those connections and 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 trying to get yourself on the team that because unfortunately you need to kind of have a team that's going to give you the right race program the right equipment possibilities and stuff or else it's just really tricky to progress mm. um so yeah just you know there's still quite a few great races in the u.s at a lesser level than the pros and i think my advice would be to take advantage of those races, get there, chat with people. I mean, <laughs> saying that I'm the most introverted human on the planet. I, I never chat with people, but I wish I were introverted. Able to, you're doing you know? a podcast, so it's it's you're, there's definitely gonna be other people that won't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that would kind of be my advice, and and just just try and enjoy it. Like that's for me, that's really been my kind of shift in mentality this year. Is you know, it's clear that I'm not going to be racing the Tour de France anytime soon. But like, for me, I'm I'm able to live this experience, live in Europe, experience these cultures, and learn languages and blah blah blah. That is just so. It goes way beyond cycling, and that's kind of my my motivation. And yeah, it's just a it's a great it's a great couple of years of your life if you can if you can make it make it work dude i'm happy that you have that mindset because i think for those of us that are watching you guys as pros getting to do that we're like that looks so awesome and not yeah the racing but just like you said like you're living in europe you're getting these experiences that i mean a lot of people your age are starting to figure out their like nine to five job and waking up like oh i gotta go to work today and like you're riding about oh. your I mean, you're gonna walk out your front door and like if you just look around, it's like, damn, this is pretty amazing. And so yeah, keep that mindset. It's huge. It's, yeah. yeah, yeah, it really is. 
Keegan, thanks for doing this, man. This is awesome. So, of course, bro. Yeah, so motivating for other riders. And we'll be, oh, my last question is what's the best way? You're obviously on Instagram. We'll post your handle there. Do you blog or Twitter or any other ways for people to keep up with what you're doing? Strava for sure. We got to get you Strava. Strava, yeah. Strava, Instagram, those are probably my two, two main ones. Although I try and try and get away from the social media. Mine is Strava. Strava is my addiction. But Love forever. Everybody, yeah. tuning in, follow Keegan on Strava. We'll post the link in the show notes below, and we'll talk to you guys all later.